Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and this is the SMSL PL200 CD player. Yes, it is a CD player. It is also a USB DAC, Bluetooth receiver, and it's got some DDC functionality in it too. This is a 670 US dollar unit. It is on loan to me from APOS Audio. APOS has asked nothing in return other than a fair and honest evaluation of this product, which you are about to get. Uh, and they have made no attempt to influence my opinion on this one way or the other. They did ask one thing in return and that would be for an affiliate link. So the link for APOS Audio in the description below where you can buy this product will be an affiliate link. If you like what I have to say about this and you want to help support the channel, please consider using that affiliate link and I will get a small kickback and I only use affiliate link money to help keep the channel running. All right, uh, this was an interesting and fun review because I really haven't listened to CDs critically in oh, well over a decade. And uh, so I had to go digging to find some of my CDs from the older days that I remember were really well recorded. And uh, so we're gonna, uh, yeah, what did I find out? Let's find out right after shameless self-promotion. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. I know there are a fair number of you out there that still like listening to your music from physical media, whether that be vinyl or from optical discs of various flavors, whether that be CD, SACD, or perhaps even some D, uh, DVD audio. And uh, 5.1 music exists out there from Blu-ray and other sources like that as well. Um, I still use CDs to an extent, but not really to listen to. I uh, use files pretty much anymore, but I have an optical drive in my uh, computer, and every once in a while, if I have some music that either has nostalgic value for me or that I really value and uh, just want to make sure that I have my own copy around permanently long term, in case streaming services go away someday or something like that, I will still often buy used or cheap CDs from Amazon or eBay or other sources there and then rip those and then access them through Rune. But it has been a very long time since I've actually listened to a CD, so I had to get a few out and do that for this review. So overall, I did enjoy this product. I liked it. Um, I don't know that I would own one personally just because it's not the kind of device that I need to use, but I'm going to do my best to describe what I heard from this thing so that those of you who are interested in CD players uh, can have an idea of what I think about this. And I will say that at least in terms of the CD functionality here, I have very few reference points to compare this to because again, it has been... 15 to 20 years since I have consistently listened to CDs regularly and know what the CD player market is like. But I do know the DAC market fairly well, so I can comment on how well that does in comparison because of the USB DAC functionality in there too. So I did like this device. I overall think that it sounds good. It has a very neutral sonic profile to it. It sounds better from the balanced output than it does the single-ended output. The DDC function, the USB DAC functionality is pretty solid and sounds pretty decent. Although I do think that like-for-like -like files sometimes will sound better from the CD than they will from a ripped file from that CD. I'll talk more about that here in a moment. Um, at least on this device, that is true, I should say. And then uh, also the DDC functionality in here is okay, but it is not the best sounding. It's functional, but it's got some sonic quirks that we're gonna talk about. So stick around to unpack all of that as the review progresses. So with that, let's talk about feature set and all of this. So this thing does come with a remote control and I will show you a close up of the remote here in just a little bit. We'll do a, an overhead view of the build of this unit. It's a top load unit and I have some comments about that. So we'll do an overhead view where I'll show you the build, show you how the uh, the loading and unloading works and, and all of that stuff and comment on that. Then we'll come back on the other side and we'll talk about test gear and sound. So use the, the timestamps to move around as necessary. Quickly some specs. So again, this thing is a CD player. It will support MQA CD as well. The USB input on it, the USB audio input on it, supports PCM files up to 32-bit, 768 kilohertz sampling rate. It supports DSD files up to DSD 512. The um, 
It will also function as a transport. You've got SPDIF outputs and all of that on there as well. Okay, there is both balanced and single-ended analog outputs on this, and there is a cursory, I'll call it, headphone output on the back panel if you just want to plug a headphone into this thing. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and cut to that overhead view where I show you the loading and the unloading, and I comment about that, show you the functionality, show you the remote, all of those kinds of things. And we'll come back on the other side, and we'll get into test gear and sound. Quasi overhead view here to talk about some of the build and the features uh, here because there are some really interesting things going on here of note that we needed to talk about. I'm going to slide it back a little bit. I have a CD in here at the moment and I just want to show you how nice and big this front panel display is there next to my thumb, right? Like you can see there's a the, the time counter and all of that is pretty large on this unit. So I appreciated that. We'll look at the front of the unit here in just a, a little bit more. I wanna talk about the disc loading system here. So I had to pull out a couple of my old CDs to do this review because I've mostly ripped all of my CDs and just listened to files anymore. So it was kind of funny. I had to go dig these out to do this review. Anyway, um, here's how you load and unload a disc. Lift this tray. Then there's like this magnetically adhered second piece right here. You see it's got guides on it. Fits right over top here and it does kind of get pulled into place magnetically. And it's not hard to lift that out of there. Okay. So it's not super strong, man. It's just strong enough to make sure that this gets locked into the right place. All right. But then you have to pull it out. Don't drop this. Like, um, this is sized and proportioned well enough that this can fall behind your equipment rack if you're not careful where you set it down. So just be careful how you use this thing. So that's one knock that I have right there. How have I never noticed that the back of this CD has like what looks like a face on it? Anyway, I've had this CD for probably over 20 years. Okay, likewise with this one. All right, and so then, you know, to swap the disc out, want to call out this is not an SACD player. This was one of those discs that Sony was doing in the earlier days of, SA, of SACD where they had an SACD layer and then a CD layer. So not an SACD player. This disc has a CD layer to it. Okay. All right, push that down. It reads. There we go. Okay, thoughts on this loading system real quick. The... Uh, Two complaints, and then one, I can see why it's going to work for, for some people. Complaint one, the fact that it's two pieces is a little bit clunky, and I kind of already talked about how this piece right here in particular is small. It's easy to drop or set on top of something and forget it's there and push it off behind your equipment rack and then have to go digging for it, and you can't lose it because that holds that piece in you know, the disc in place and all of that. And then you have to put this thing on top of it because there's this little button right here. I don't know if you can see that where that holds it down to make sure that this does its reading and all of that. So the two piece aspect of it is a little bit clunky and easy to lose. The other part about the top loading style is that this has to be the top piece in your equipment rack. It's gotta be on top of everything else. So you're gonna be a little bit limited in terms of where you can put this in your equipment rack. And of course the top then has to be accessible. So you have to put thought into where it's gonna go. My preference, even though like there's just something cool about top loading, my preference is to have a button and then a drawer comes out and then you put the disc in the drawer and then the disc goes back inside the machine in terms of ergonomics and use, like the downside of that style is if like the power supply ever fails, you have to manually pull that thing open and dig the disc out of there and try not to scratch everything up. Here, if the power goes out or the power supply dies, you just open up the top and pull the disc out, put it back in the case and you're on your merry way. All right, the good part potentially about the top loading a thing that I have heard from vinyl users in particular, and I imagine the same applies to optical disc-based listeners, those who prefer to do that, is the ritual behind it. Of course they love the music. Of course you love the music, and it's primarily about the music. But one thing that I hear from vinyl users is that they enjoy the process of standing in front of their, their shelves, where they've got their, their library on there, looking at all their vinyl, or I imagine all of their CDs. 
all of their music spread out before them on the shelving in front of them. And they're like, what do I want to listen to? And then they look through and they pull one off the shelf and then they have something to hold in their hands. And then they have something to open and to take the disc out. And then like they have to go to their player and they have to open it or move the arm out of the way or anything. And then they have to set their vinyl disc down or put their CD in the drawer or whatever it is. And then they have more to touch by coming back and putting this into place. And then they have this jacket right here with the insert or just the big cover art of the vinyl sleeve to go to their listening position, sit down, and then listen to the music and like look at the artwork and all of that at the same time. Where, yes, again, it is primarily about the love of the music, but there's also that ritual to it that resonates with them and connects with them. So if that's you... If that applies to you, then this two-piece loading and unloading system probably will fit right in with that way of listening and being and doing music. Now, I don't happen to really be one of those people, so I find this to be a little bit on the clunkier side, and I, again, as a reviewer, I have stacks and piles of gear everywhere. I appreciate more uh, placement uh, flexibility but I can see why someone who is attracted to the ritualistic aspect of swapping a physical piece of audio media in and out, um, why this would be appealing. Okay, now that a disc is out of there, let me unplug the power, we'll do a quick unit tour. Front panel, again, nice big display here. Then we have a multifunction button, push and hold for power on off push for menu, navigate menu by turning this. When it's not in menu, this is also the volume knob for the variable analog outputs, which I'll show you in a minute. And then also you can select by just pushing here as well. Here we have the transport buttons, which SMSL refers to as piano key buttons because they push down kind of like piano keys do, and they have a fairly satisfying click to them. Okay, like so. All right, round back. Power input, we have the stem right here for the Bluetooth antenna. Again, there's uh, blue, at least Bluetooth 5.0 with LDAC in here. USB audio input, more on this in just a moment. Then we have SPDIF outputs for transport functionality. You've got uh, Toslink Optical and RCA coaxial SPDIF digital audio outputs. Here we have the analog audio outputs coming from the DAC. We've got single-ended RCA connections. We have balanced XLR connections here. And then we have a quarter inch slash 6.35 millimeter single-ended headphone output here on the back panel as well. Just a very basic kind of just more of, uh, as a convenience kind of headphone output here uh, as far as I can tell. Now, real quick, this is an USB audio input, not an output. So you can hook your computer or your streamer or whatever up to this, and then the DAC in here will decode digital files for you up to PCM 32-bit 768 kilohertz, I believe, and up to DSD 512. There's also some fairly basic DDC, digital-to-digital -digital conversion functionality in here because I tried inputting some digital audio via USB, and the optical output, at least, was live. It was sending out whatever was going in here with slight conversion version as necessary. It wasn't great, but it's there. It was functional. Okay. But that's the unit in terms of the build and the features and the loading and all of that. Otherwise it's a very solid, okay. Unit with a lot of metal and that noise you're hearing. is just this drawer here, just kind of sitting in there due to gravity. These corners are a little on the sharp side. So just keep that in mind too. Um, catch that the wrong way. It's going to hurt. Here is the remote control that comes with it. It's got, you know, the transport uh, functionality here. We have a menu button. We have volume control, mute, okay, input selector, okay, uh, display dimming, and that, and just numeric entry, all that shuffle, repeat, all that pretty uh, decently laid out, fully featured remote control that comes with. Another thing that I like about it is that is subtle is it takes AAA batteries which are easier to source and more plentiful out there other than like a lot of remote controls these days are going to those like quarter sized, what are they, CS3032 or something like that, batteries that like computer motherboards use and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's the remote control. It's plasticky and feels a little cheaper than the unit itself, but in terms of its functionality, really no complaints about it. All right, to test this device, 
obviously I used some CDs. I used to be a big CD collector, so I still have several dozen of them around. So I went and dug through my old CD collection. I'm like, okay, what in here do I remember standing out as sounding pretty good that I can use as test gear? The, two, uh, the CDs that I showed you in that overhead view, the Attack of the Clones soundtrack and the uh, Police Greatest Hits set there, that Police CD in particular just sounds amazing. Like Stuart Copeland's Room Reverbs from his drummings, drumming, just it's really good, really well recorded, really well produced. Sounds great. Anyway, those were two of the CDs that I used uh, here to, to play on this thing. I also, to check the USB input, I used my phone, which is doing the recording. It's a Galaxy S22 Plus phone from Samsung, so it's Android based. Using the Rune Arc app, I used an AudioQuest 4S USB-C to USB-C cable to go from there into here, and then uh, checked the, uh, the USB input based on that source gear here as well, playing files from Rune and what I would do is compare a CD track on here and then I would go find that same track from that CD that I ripped at some point in the past and now access through Rune uh, as a FLAC file to check um, to compare the USB and the CD performance here. So more on that in a moment. For most of my critical listening, I plugged both the balanced and single-ended outputs of the CD player into my Lake People G111 Mark II headphone amp. I also tried the PL200 as a transport, and I got one of SMSL's DACs out uh, to use as the DAC for this. This is the DO300, which is about 500 or 550 US dollars, somewhere right around in that range. All that to uh, compare the DAC, uh, the DAC performance in here to the DAC performance in that, and then also to see what this was like. The PL200 was like as a transport. And then the headphone that I primarily use, because I'm mostly a headphone user, user to do with a critical listening test of this, was my very trust, trusty Hi Feynman HE1000 SE, which is becoming an indispensable review tool because I trust it to tell me the truth. I know that the Lake People G111 Mark II drives it well and that sort of thing. I use the Lake People G111 Mark II because it's a 550, 600 ish dollar amp, which I think is price matched to the PL200 well. And then again, I trust the HE1000 SE to resolve things and tell me the truth. So I uh, use that as my headphone for this testing. Okay, let's get into it here. The sound of the uh, PL200 from its analog outputs on its own, because I think for a lot of people that's going to be the main thing that they use here, probably, just because it's a CD player and not a CD transport. And again, if you don't know the difference between those, that CD transport has only digital outputs and just streams the digital audio signal from the disc to an outboard DAC, whereas a CD player has, an, has onboard digital to analog conversion and therefore analog outputs on. It. So because this is a CD player, I think that will be the most common use case using the analog outputs for a lot of people who own this or who may want to own this. And the sound that you get from that is very neutral. It is very reminiscent of the SMSL house sound. If you've heard an SMSL DAC, it is just very neutral in its frequency response and its tonality, but there is a little bit of hint of digital glare up towards the top. The, the high end or the high frequencies and all of that, there's just a little, just a slight hint of harshness in the treble up there, which kind of gives it sort of that digital glare at times. Now, what was interesting to me is that the playing from a CD sounded the most analog. It was slightly warmer, a little bit less of that digital glare and that etched sound going on in the top end from the CDs. From the USB input as I used it there, so again, sourced from my phone using the Rune Arc app, which was bit perfect output, all of that, where the CD version of whatever track that I was playing sounded a little bit smoother, just a touch warmer, and just a little bit more overall analog in its presentation than did the USB input. Again, same track that I ripped from that CD myself once upon a time using DB Power Amp. Okay, and then is stored locally on my um, NUC little NUC Rune server here at home. And uh, so again, same file sourced from the same place. I just think that the CD through this device and from the USB configuration I was using sounded a little bit better, a little bit warmer, smoother, and just for lack of a better term, a little bit more analog. 
but the sound output from the analog outputs here is just very, I would call it competent. Very neutral, very clean, very clear, just a little bit of a hint of, uh, of, of digital glare up in the top end, maybe just a little bit of that ESS treble brittleness and uh, sharpness because there's an ESS DAC chip in the DAC here, okay? But not bad, all right? I did also observe that the balanced analog output worked better than the single-ended out analog output. And by worked better, I mean sounded better. Cleaner, clearer, more resolving, bigger sound stage, more holography to the sound, which is very, very common in comparing the digital, or no, excuse me, the balanced and unbalanced analog outputs for devices that do digital to analog conversion in this price range. Like that happens pretty much every time you have a balanced DAC with single ended outputs on it too. Th those differences that I just described hold up from device to device. And again, like I made sure to volume match and I used WBC um, cables, world's best cables, XLR and RCA. So made from the same company, made sure they were both the Canary, um, Canary, Canary, whatever, uh, of cable type and used Amphenol brand connectors on both of them into the same device here, single-ended amp with balanced inputs on it, an internal balanced single-ended conversion, and just like switching back and forth and then volume matching, because the XLR is louder, but switching back and forth and volume matching, there was just a noticeable improvement in resolution slash detail retrieval, sound stage size, and also like holography, imaging and separation effects, and like just, a, you know, things like that improvement from the balance over the single ended output. So if at all possible, I would use that balance output. All right. As a transport, I think things improved a little bit. I, again, the DO 300 here is just a DAC, right? It, uh, it's a 550 ish dollar thing. I'll have to look it up, but I have a review of this. So I will say it in my review, but it's in that range. Um, DAC that's also ESS chip based and all of that. So it has a very similar sonic profile to the sound that was coming out of here, but using the toast link optical output of this into there, I should say like the, the DO 300 st sounded even smoother and more analog yet than either of these, the, the uh, direct CD or like the, the USB input on the, did on this on its own. So the DAC in the PL200 is competent, but I would say it is more in line with what's out there in like the 200 to 250 US dollar market, like in that range in terms of the level of performance that you can expect. So if you use this as a transport and a higher quality DAC in there, you will get a bump in performance. Now that's not surprising, but that also helped me place like what you know the value of the DAC in here I think it probably is somewhere in the two to two hundred fifty dollar range if you just took the DAC circuitry of the PL200 out and sold it as its own unit it would fall in roughly that range most likely all right DDC performance on this because I mentioned that it can do it it's functional but it's not great I did try again using the the USB input and then using this as a transport, the fiber optic out into the DO300. This thing did a reasonably good job of passing at least PCM files up to 96 kilohertz in sampling rate, but something got a little lost in there because like the digital output there, like the sound sounded like the most glary and uh, harsh of any of the combinations that I've tried and explained so far. It will work in a pinch but it's not great. Like I would not buy this for its DDC capability, uh, it, in other words there. And if you need to use it as a DDC, in addition to it being a CD player, I don't know if such a thing exists, but you might want to look into another option because it's functional, it'll work, but it will really mar the experience uh, for listening to digital files from an USB source even more than uh, just doing the USB direct into here and then using this thing's internal DAC. So just keep that in mind. All right. So I think I've said about what I need to say about this unit here. Again, I, it's difficult for me to compare this two other units other than the DAC comparison, which I've kind of already done here, because again, I just have very limited experience with dedicated CD players here at this point. I will say that like the onboard DAC here, for a $670 unit, 
a lot of people may use it that way and it is competent, but I just like I think I would have rather have seen a 400 maybe $500 transport that didn't have the DAC functionality in it. That was just a transport, just the digital output. Uh, so and that's just me as a user these days like I pretty much use separate so I'm just about everything all in one devices or like the more function and feature features that you put into a single chassis, I just find that more and more often you start to get performance hits on things. So if I needed a CD player, I would probably look for a transport first. But if you are just system building, you know you still use a lot of CDs and you just kind of want to dabble in USB audio and streaming maybe, then I think this could be a, a good option for you there at 670 US dollars. But that's the best I can do for you in terms of talking about value of this as a disc player and where it fits into the market. Uh, personally, I would like to see uh, SMSL or someone else come along and Keep the transport functionality, but beef up the DDC functionality of this and create a, a DDC device that has an optical disk drive in it, particularly if it will also play SACDs. That would be really cool as like this kind of all-in-one all digital um, music source box kind of thing. I can connect my streamer to it and then use a different digital output like I squared S or something like this, like that. And then I can like play my CDs or my SACDs on it too, all in one device as a transport. I think that would be a cool thing to see more options for that in the market. Um, and I realize that developing a product like that becomes expensive and you know, that's why those kinds of things don't really roll out, but roll out very often. But SMSL probably released two new DACs and a new amp in the amount of time since you pushed play on this video until now. So SMSL seems like the kind of company that would be well positioned to get into that optical disc player and high quality DDC game in one unit. Um, I think that would be cool. But I will go ahead and leave it there. I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the SMSL PL200 CD Player DAC DDC unit. Uh, please remember to like this video if you haven't yet. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, leave a comment down below to help boost the algorithm and all of that. Check out my PayPal, my Patreon, and uh, look for ways that you can support the channel in those kinds of ways. And as always, thanks again for watching and enjoy the music.